live, this is Beatty and Brief. Welcome to Betty and Reith, Betty Newman. Good evening. He's back, he's back, and looking back healthier than ever. Well, I was here last week. <laughs> and the week before, but you were yeah, just yeah. another place. By the way, we send our best wishes to Peter Reith, who's making a great recovery for all those people who ring and ask. He's doing really well. Peter, good luck. Now, tonight, we're doing something different. We've got Lincoln Townley, Townley. a great artist. From the UK. From the UK. He's stirring things up. He is stirring things up. He sold a painting recently for $1.67 million. Get out of town. He is the it's only one who's getting more money than the CEO of the Commonwealth Bank. If he works hard, he will. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to talk to Lincoln in a minute because he was described by Michael Caine as the new Andy Warhol. Great art. You're going to see a little bit during the show. So, Lincoln, thank Lincoln. you for joining us. Lincoln, how are you? Oh, how are you? <laughs> Peter, sorry, sorry Campbell, mate. sorry, yeah. Yeah, great, thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Well, great. we are delighted because you're in Brisbane and we're in Sydney. Yeah, we live in Brisbane. It's just one of those things of television. Yeah, that's right. I'm very comfortable here anyway. It's very good of you. Now, let me get to the heart of this. You had no formal training in art, but your grandfather was a considerable influence on you. So tell me, how did you get into that? What was your relationship with your granddad like? How did you become an artist from that point of view or that experience? Yeah, well, he was a very sort of turbulent guy. Um, I sort of know where I get it from, so I must be a chip off the old block. But he's, um, he taught me how to paint from a very early age, from about eight years old to about 12. And then by the time I was 12, I sort of, I think I knew everything I needed to know, and sort of girls come along and my mates come along. I didn't want to do any painting anymore, but it gave <laughs> me the foundation. It gave me the foundation of what I wanted to do. And I've always painted. I've always painted in my, in my sort of free time and that sort of thing. I've painted things for people in the past. And it was only when I was coming up to my late 30s that I wanted a change in direction completely and I really wanted to address my creativity. You went through, and I'm, I'm probably using your words, if not my apologies, but you went through a few decadent years where you got involved in a number of things. You did the club scene. I think you did a few drugs at the time. How did that affect you in terms of your creativity? How did you come out of that? Tell us about that period in your life. Yeah, well, I, I, um, I ran clubs. I did PR and marketing for clubs um, for an incredible guy called Peter Stringfellow. Um, who was um, who I looked upon as a father figure, to be fair. Um, I spent many years in Soho running clubs, and in the end, he sacked me because I was a you know, I, I abused drugs and alcohol uh, and anything else I could. So it was, I got to a point where I needed to make a big change in my life. Um, you know, and I met my wife, who's a very famous uh, actress. And uh, I said, listen, uh, you know, Denise, I'm going to make a change. I'm going to actually uh, look at uh, becoming an artist and selling my art. You know, as it, it was a, you know, that, that's a, when I think back on it now, that was, as, that was as easy as it was to say, but it was very, very difficult to, you know, to, to embrace that, taking on my sobriety at that stage and then saying, right, I want to do this for a living. But Lincoln, I heard initially though you were a bit, perhaps a bit shy about it, and you had these paintings, but you stashed them at home under the bed. What, what sort of is that true? And what, what uh, got you to have the confidence to start sort of bringing them out and uh, showing them to people? Well, listen, you know, um, I've always been a salesman and a marketeer, and I knew if I didn't put them out there, you know, I wasn't going to sell any. And it was something that I felt very passionate about. So I thought, right, I'm going to get these out. And I, I put them in a, uh, an old suitcase. This is a true story. I put them in an old suitcase and I actually ventured out into uh, the centre of London in Mayfair and presented these paintings and literally was laughed at. So uh, I worked out it was over about 90 times I got turned down with my art to begin with, which was probably in the late 2011, 2012. So we, we're talking about someone that's really gone sort of uh, full out to see if anyone's going to be able to represent him. And I didn't get anyone and no one was interested. So then I started to look for a location for myself to do my own show. Okay, so, and, and that then sort of really got you going? Where did, where did you do that first show? Uh, I did the show at the Rifle Maker in Beak Street. Um, and I had, some, I had some clients from my days in the clubs that always used to say to me, if you cleaned yourself up, you'd be able to do so much. 
and they saw the creative streak in me as well and a lot of them knew that I painted and I just said look I'm going to take this painting to the max I'm going to go for it um, so I rented this space and I actually had a show over a weekend and I sold everything and the point is as well, I think one of the things is here is that, um, which is one of the, I suppose, the influences that I like to feel that I've got over other people that come to me and talk to me about what should they do if they're, art, if they're struggling artists. And when I say struggling, I'm talking about someone that can't earn a living from their profession as an artist, so they've got to do something else. We're talking about somebody, um, myself, who's gone from 2012 up to last year, October, the end of last year, I was in Charles Sarchi's gallery and I was selling at blue chip artist prices and I sold the whole show. I sold 20 pieces on the one night. Everything. So in five years I've gone from literally zero to selling at a blue chip price. Wow. So in, in a sense you actually rented your own space for your first exhibition. Yeah. Which, which took a lot of guts but from there you've gone to actually being a, an artist a bit like Andy Warhol who wanted to have a commercial aspect to it. So tell us a bit about oh, yeah. that. Well, I knew that uh, to get traction, there's two sides of my work, there's a contrast in my work, right? So there's the darker side, which we're showing at the Brisbane Powerhouse. Show starts this Thursday on the 17th, runs the 1st of October. This has got a lot of my work which looks at what we go through to become successful. Now, the, the, uh, the product that I've used as the success is famous people. So I've got famous faces, I've got like Jeffrey Rush, I've got the portrait of him there, I've got the Kylie Minogue portrait there. I've just launched uh, the Russell Crowe portrait there as well. These are all people that have gone through, you know, they've gone, they've gone through a lot. You, took, you look at uh, Russell Crowe, for instance, he started as a musician, uh, got his first break in Rocky Horror Picture Show, uh, and then he was busking. After that, he busked for six months. We're talking about a guy here who is now, you know, he's won Academy Awards, etc., for the Gladiator, that sort of thing. This is what it takes, and that's why from 2012 up to now, all I've done is I've dug deep. And all, I'm interested in people that take risks and people that are successful. And that's what I want to uh, pursue in my art. So as I say, I've got the darker side and I've got the side with look at icons. Um, and I've painted a, very, a lot of famous people, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Meryl Streep. You know, I'm, I'm in Branson, the third I year. Richard Branson? Say that did again. You, did you do Richard Branson? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, th you know, uh, that was when I moved into doing uh, my business icons. I wanted to look at entrepreneurial spirit. I wanted to look at uh, people that don't take no for an answer. I look at no's and I think to myself, right, you know, if I'm going to get a no, I'm going to look forward to the next no because I'm nearer to a yes. And they're the sort of people I like to paint. They're like the people I like to represent my work. They're the people that I like to be around. That's the sort of uh, spirit that I've got. And I think this is very important because commerce is extremely important and when it comes down to art and being successful. Well, I just really am interested in that, Lincoln, this, this commercial angle, because a lot of artists will sort of uh, not be prepared to talk like that at all. In fact, uh, dare I say it, I, I think you've you copped a bit of flack in the past about that, but I, I actually find it refreshingly honest. Do you want to sort of expand a bit on, you know, how, how do you view art as a business, as a personal business? Um, well, I think that, well, first of all, if I, if I didn't get paid for my art, I wouldn't be able to be an artist, therefore what would I do? And in most cases, artists don't, artists don't see themselves as uh, the passion is towards the art, don't think about the money. I don't know whether it's, I haven't even actually heard them expand on that to say, don't think about the money because the money will come. You know, we're not talking about, uh, you know, Anselm Kiefer's or Francis Bacon. I mean, you know, some of these are dead, some of them are still alive, you know, the, the, uh, the war holes of this world. But we're talking about just general artists, okay? I don't think there's enough people that actually think to themselves, or even told if they do go through art school or go through university, and their, their understanding is, oh, I'll just find an art agent and that person will then, you know, take me on and then sell my work. There's 12 months in a year. I'll tell you what happened. I went to, when I first started looking at um, talking to a gallery in Mayfair, which someone got interested in me, I went to have a meeting with them and they thought I was going to bite their hand off for the opportunity of putting my art in their gallery. They said to me, we'll take you on. And I said, yeah, but hang on, how many artists do you deal with? He looked shocked. There's 12 months in a year, this guy's looking after 25 artists. OK, if you're going to do a single solo show, it usually lasts for a month. That means I won't even get my foot in the door for two years. What's the point of me putting my art in with them? They want me exclusive to them. 
Why aren't they exclusive to me? Now, I'm not saying they're only going to sell my art, but my point is this. You can't have me exclusive. I want a lot of artists, because I want a lot of artists to have a bite of the cherry selling my art. If I produce 15 paintings in one year, you have an opportunity of selling one of them, OK? You could have an opportunity of selling 15 of them. That's if I have an open agreement with you. But if I have a closed-off agreement, I can't deal with you. Because if you don't sell, I'm not going to make any money. Therefore, I can't continue to be an artist. Bengen, have you had a chance, and I hope you will, if you haven't, to have a look at the Gallery of Modern Art in Brisbane? And I, if you do, I'd be interested to hear your view at another occasion about it. But let me ask you this. How do you see art in Australia? I mean, you've been here only for a little while. I understand that. Do you see a lot of energy here? What's happening in Australian art? Um, do you know what? I, I, comment on it, Australian art. Um, I've, um, I, I wouldn't say I've been here long enough to really sort of get my teeth into it, to be fair. Um, the Aboriginal art I find very interesting, um, but I've never seen it anywhere else. So I, I did go to, I did go to uh, Goma at the weekend, um, and I found it that um, I'm... It's very difficult because art, for me, um, is so, it's so diverse if I, don't, if I don't really understand it, I, it's hard for me to comment on it. I find my, my, own, my own work is so insular to me. I, I concentrate so heavily on my own opinions about my own work. To judge others, I find very hard. I think this is one of the reasons that Michael Caine, when I first started talking to Michael Caine, I, I did a portrait of Michael, uh, of the two Harrys. OK, right. <laughs> uh, it was Harry Brown and Harry Palmer in one portrait. And he said to me, you remind me of Andy Warhol because of the, you've got the commerciality, the, 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 the interest in the commerce side of what you do as well. Because I said to him, I want to paint more famous people. What can I do? You know, I mean, I've, I've, done, I've created portraits now of Michael, nine portraits of Michael. Um, and to sort of uh, to go back to your question, even about Australia, I don't really know any other portrait artists, especially any in, in, uh, in, in Australia, because the thing is, I'm, I'm so focused on myself, and, that, and that, 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 I mean, that might sound rude even, but I am so focused on myself, I don't think of anybody else. Mm. Fair enough. I've got, I've got to be, it's got to, it's, I've got to have that. So, yeah. Lincoln, looking forward, what's the plan? What are you going to be doing over the next 10, 18 months? Uh, two or three years to, to further your work and to, to, to further sort of your profile, I suppose, yeah. Well, look, OK, so this is it, OK? I'm going to earn, I'm going to earn a lot of money so I can do... So, no, but it's true. I'm going to earn a lot of money. I can do great shows. I can work with the right people. I can work in the right locations, have the right studio. I want to produce bigger work. I want to work with more highly successful people, entrepreneurial people I'm interested in. I don't even really know what I'm going to be painting in three months' time, let alone three years or 30 years. My whole point is it's all about progression. And if I don't sell my work, I can't progress. And that's the way I see it. So my, my whole point is, my vision is sell, find more, find more people to paint with in regards to icons, create the icons, that's commercial for me. I'm being very honest, you know, this is a really honest uh, interview here. And then look at... I want to go deeper into the darker stuff. The darker work that I do is all about the passion of how I get to where I go. And it's a cathartic exercise as well because I'm interested in, in, in the darker side. When I used to go to clubs, I was interested in men that pushed limits, pushed their even darker limits. Where are they going? Where are these people going? I was, I was interested in it. And I feel that this is something that I, I really want to capture in my work. Lincoln, people like David Sullivan and others who've collected your work, quite wealthy people, how, I mean, obviously they pay for your art and they're very important. What's more important for you, a David Sullivan or an exhibition? Well, an exhibition now, but a David Sullivan before. OK. So hmm. it, it, depends on the, it depends on the time span. I needed to make the money to do the right exhibitions. But now I want to get the work more out to the masses, and that's my... I, I want to share it, and I want to share... It's like tonight. Sharing what I'm talking about here is I believe it would be very inspirational for other um, artists. Whether or not there could be someone that's semi-retired that's painting that wants to sell their work. If they can't go in a gallery, why don't they go in a public space? Sometimes I don't even want to go into a gallery because I don't even feel welcome when I walk in. But if I walk into a nice hotel or a nice restaurant and I see nice art on the wall and I'm relaxed, 
I might start getting an interest in this person. And this is where I think there's a diversity. I think that the, the model of the art world is over. This is my opinion, it's over. Mm. Oh, that's the really, art world, yeah. yeah, that's really quite is. interesting. And we've still got a moment or two, so yeah. do you want to expand on that? I mean, because you know, you're not establishment. The establishment really you know, knocked you and they, they didn't want to let you into those galleries in the start. Um, so do you want to just talk a bit more about that? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, um, I, think that the, um, I think that the technology behind social media, uh, the way that we can connect with much more, many more people 24 hours a day is extremely important. And a gallery is open for a set amount of days. Some of the galleries are only open four days a week. And then even if you go into them, you don't feel comfortable. And what we're talking about here is, is we're talking about a, a mass reach. The further I can reach to get my art out there into any community, any community, in most cases, the people that buy my work believe in me. They like my backstory, they like the fight, they like my determination, okay? And if I can push that out on social media, I can get to anyone, anywhere in the world, 24 hours a day. If I try to communicate this for a gallery, my representation is diluted. OK, and this is where in the future it's all to do with looking at platforms which can inspire people to buy, can inspire people to collect, follow artists, look at the work they're doing, you know, and there's platforms arriving now in the marketplace that are doing this. And I think that's the way it's going to go forward. It's going to be it's going to revolutionise the way that people look at art, buy art and present their art. Lincoln, unfortunately our time's out. Can I thank you very much? Yeah, We've enjoyed yeah. this discussion. Greatly. We wish you well. It's great to have you in Australia. And I know I just mentioned this for you. The Lincoln Townsland, Townley, I'll get it right, surprise collection is on display at the Brisbane Powerhouse uh, from the 17th of August to the 1st of October. And you're here for all that time? Yeah, well, I go back on the 26th, but I'm around at any time. I'll, I'll see anyone anywhere. And we'd like to encourage... Interstate people to come up to Brisbane. It's a lovely time of year. Bit of bit of arts tourism. Come up and see He's Lincoln's in, yeah. uh, exhibition. Well, good luck with it, Lincoln. Absolutely. Good to see you, and we look forward Thanks, to a lot, of, a lot of your pur purchases going ahead. Good luck. Thanks, Campbell. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks we'll, Scott. we'll be back in a minute. Where we're going to be talking about jobs, and we're going to be talking about TAFE and training people for the future. Don't go away. <laughs>